All right, so we're going to do problem thirty-one from chapter fifteen. Um, a five, a five kilogram object on the horizontal frictionless surface is attached to a spring with a con uh, with a spring constant that is a thousand newtons per meters. The object is displaced from equilibrium fifty centimeters horizontally and given an initial velocity of ten meters per second back to the equilibrium position. So in other words, there is an initial condition. Initially, the uh, displacement is as 50 centimeters from the relaxed uh, position, and the initial velocity is 10 meters per second, and it's backward, which means that it is you know, coming toward the, uh, uh, coming toward the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the equilibrium position. So you'll also find the motion's frequency the initial uh, initial uh, potential energy of the block spring system and the initial kinetic energy, and you're also asked to find the motions amplitude. So this is actually very similar to the uh, the, pro uh, the problems that we did earlier. So how do we do this problem? You have mass, you have k. So whenever you see mass uh, mass and spring constant, you can actually calculate the angular frequency because angular frequency is equal to k over m. Okay, so what we have here is that you have square root of k is a thousand and your m is five, so you can calculate your omega. Your omega, well, after you do the calculation, is 14.14, and that's in radians per second. You're not asked to find angle frequency, you're asked to find frequency. So your frequency is equal to omega over two pi. So plug in the numbers uh, over here and divide by two pi, you get 2.25 hertz. This is how we calculate the frequency. You can see that very straightforward applications of these equations, and you also find the initial, uh, you know, spring uh, initial energy, potential energy. So your initial potential energy, because you're given the initial position, so you can have you can use one half k x i square, and so you have one half your k value is a thousand, and then your x is 0.5 squared, and then so your u i you will have 125 joules. Likewise, to calculate kinetic energy, you just use one half mvi squared, and you have your one half, your m is five, and then your vi is negative ten squared. So after you plug, uh, plug in the numbers, you have two hundred and fifty joules. Okay. So in other words. Initially, you have spring potential energy and kinetic energy. So, of course, when you add these two together, that gives you the, in, the total energy of the initial system. So, when you add these two together, 125 plus 250, that gives you, um, that gives you uh, 375 joules. This is the total amount of energy to start uh, to begin with, and you also find what is the amplitude. So, you would say, so uh, you know, again, conservation of energy. This is the energy that you begin with when all the energy has turned into spring potential energy. This is one half and then k x m squared. Okay, so you have your one half and your k is a thousand, and then you have x m squared. So you can calculate your x m. So what is your x m? Your x m after you point to number that should give you 0.866 meters. So you can see that this is. Of a problem that is very similar to the one uh, you know, that we did before. And just based on, utilize this equation, utilize the conservation of energy. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so the next one we want to do is problem, let's see, 33. Let me just erase, so we have capital M here, 5.4K, 6,000, and little M, 9.5, velocity. All right, so problem 33, <clears throat> a block, okay, so let me draw a diagram. So this is the diagram, you have 
block. So this is your capital M, and this is the bullet. It's moving with that velocity. This is a little m. This has spring constant k. All right, so a block of mass that's uh, 5.4 kilograms at rest on the horizontal frictionless table is attached to a rigid support by a spring constant that's 6,000 newton per meters. A bullet of mass that's 9.5 grams and velocity that has a mean of 630 meters per second strikes and is embedded in the block. So this is before collision and after collision. So you have the block and the bullet, okay? And uh, assuming the compression of the spring is negligible until the bullet is embedded, and you want to determine the speed of the block immediately after collision. So this is before and this is after. And then, uh, so uh, what, is the, what is the velocity? That's use capital V to indicate uh, that. And you can see that this is a complete inelastic collision and the amplitude of the, uh, of the simple harmonic motion. Okay, so you want to find the amplitude, you want to find velocity, you also want to find xm. So these are the two quantities you're asked to find, given the information you're, uh, of this. So you can see that this is a, a typical um, a collision problem. You have a bullet that carries energy and momentum, and uh, so, so we know that there is a linear momentum uh, involved before collision. After collision, the whole thing is, uh, you know, is moving, and it's moving, with the, uh, so, um, so it's moving with the velocity v. So this is after uh, you know, collision. So you can see that this is a complete, a complete elastic collision. So energy is not conserved during the collision process. But we know that linear momentum is conserved. So you have your pi that has to be equal to pf. Okay, so... How? So the, uh, the, the big block initially is not moving, so it has no needed momentum. So initial needed momentum was just coming from the bullet. So you have the mass of the bullet and the velocity of the bullet. So that's the, uh, that's the only term uh, before collision. After collision, it is you know, because the, the bullet is embedded in the, uh, in the block. So you will have the combined mass, little m plus big m, and then times the, combined, uh, you know, the, uh, the velocity when they move together. So from here, you can actually calculate your, uh, your big V, okay? So you will have, so your V, so your V here would just be the little m, which is 9.5 times 10 to the negative 3, and then times the velocity is 630, uh, and then divided by the sum of the mass. <clears throat> So after the cal do the calculation, the velocity after collision they will move at this velocity, which is 1.106 uh, meter per second. This is how fast they move after collision, and after collision because it comes uh, after collision those this this two they are moving together with that velocity. So we know that you know at this instant there is a kinetic energy. So you also find what is the maximum uh, displacement. So Maximum displacement, what, uh, you know, what, uh, what occurred when this velocity, you know, the whole thing is keep moving until you can't move any further. And in such case, it will, uh, it will be uh, momentary, you know, station, uh, you know, like rest, uh, uh, at rest. So in other words, you can treat this after collision. This becomes your initial velocity. And, you know, when they reach the, uh, when they compress further until it could not move, then it lost its old velocity here. So you can see that initially, at this point, you had kinetic energy. And then through the conversion of energy from the kinetic energy to the uh, spring potential energy, all the kinetic energy has been converted so that there's no more velocity, right? So this is a typical conservation of energy during this part, OK? So you have one half. The total kinetic energy, of course, will be one half combined mass. And then the velocity squared. This energy has to be in the form of spring potential energy. So it's one half k x m squared. Okay, so you can plug in the numbers. You have nine point five, and then five point four, and then your v. Your v we calculate to be one point one zero six square. That's equal to one half, and your k value is six thousand, and then your x m, and then you square it. So what is your XM? Your XM, after you, after you do this calculation, you'll find that your XM is equal to 0 0.0332 meters. Okay, it's about like 3.32 centimeters.
Okay, so so this actually uh, is very similar to uh, the problems that you did before when you're dealing uh, in chapter nine. That you know you have the uh, initially energy is not conserved, but uh, momentum is conserved, and after the uh, after the collision, then the energy is conserved. So it's from uh, changing from one form of energy to another. Okay, so this is problem thirty-three, and the last one we want to do is problem thirty-five. <clears throat> So let's see what problem 35 is about. A 10 grams, okay, so mass is 10 gram. A 10 gram particle undergoes a simple harmonic motion with an amplitude of 2 millimeters. So Xm is 2 mm. A maximum acceleration that amounts to A times 10 to the third meter per second squared. So Am is A times 10 to the third. That's your acceleration and an unknown phase constant. What are the periods? So you'll find you'll ask to find period, the maximum speed, Vm, and uh, the total mechanical energy of the oscillator. So that's E. And uh, what is the magnitude of the force on the particle when the particle is at the maximum displacement or half its maximum displacement? So you'll ask to find the force. The force when is the maximum or Half the uh, when max uh, and another force. Okay, when the max uh, when the force is at half of its maximum displacement. So that just say force. Okay, so given this, how do we figure out the uh, uh, you know all these other quantities? So let's see. You uh, you have the uh, you have the mass. You have this. You have this. And is spring constant given? Let's see. But then you have the uh, uh, spring constant is not given, so we can't really use omega that's equal to square root of n over k because spring constant is not given. However, we know that the amplitude displacement and acceleration displacement, they are related to each other. The xm is equal to uh, the uh, omega square xm, numerical-wise. Okay, so, so what we have here is that you have your a times n to the 3, and then the omega square, and you have your x, which is 2, and then the times 10 to the negative third, because, um, because it is, uh, you have to convert it to meters. So once you, have, uh, once you have that, your omega, you can have your omega that is equal to, your omega that is equal to um, 2,000 radians per second. So this is how you figure out omega, utilize this equation, okay? So once you have your omega, then it becomes easy to calculate your t because your t is 2 pi over omega. So after you plug in the number, you have your t that is equal to 3.14 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds after you plug in the uh, omega value. And then you also find the uh, uh, Vm. Now, once you know omega, then it becomes quite easy to find Vm because your Vm and Xm, which is given, and omega, they're related by this. So you have your xm, which is 2 times 10 to the negative third, and then times multiplied by 2,000, that's your omega. So your vm, that is equal to 4 meter per second. Okay? So that's your vm. And then you also find the total energy of the system. So how do we find the total energy of the system? To find total energy of the system, because you already given the, uh, the, dis the maximum displacement or the uh, displacement amplitude. So it's very straightforward. Just use 1 half kxm squared to calculate that. The only problem is that we don't know our k value, even though xm is given. But, you know, but that is okay because we already calculated our omega. So we're going to use this. Omega is equal to the square root of um, n over k. So you will have uh, k over m. So we can use this to calculate our k value. So your k is equal to omega squared times m. And your omega is 2,000, and your m is 2 times negative third. So once you do that, your k value is 
40,000, which are a huge number, 40,000 uh, newtons per, per meters. And then now we're ready to plug into this equation. Your xm is this. So after you punch in the numbers, your e, your e value, you'll get 0 0.08, and that's in joules. Okay. So you can see that the equation itself is very easy. It's just that we are not given the k value, but uh, you can use this equation to calculate your k value, and, and then uh, and then use that to plug into this equation. And then you also find what is your uh, maximum, uh, you know, maximum. Um, force. So the maximum spring force, of course, would just be equal to k times xm. That's the just the main two. So you have 40,000, that's your spring constant, and then times your xm, 2 times negative 3, so you have your fm, that is equal to, um, that is equal to 80 newton. Now if you have the uh, amplitude that is half the size, then of course that, that one, the new, the, the new force, if the amplitude becomes half the size, it will just be k and then xn over 2. So you'll have just 40 newton. Okay? So you can see that chapter 15 is all about simple harmonic motion, conservation of energy. This is the, uh, one of the key equations that you have to know. Another key equation is this. And it becomes uh, you know, very useful. Okay? So that is that. <laughs>